my name is Steve Halberg, and I'm a child of the King. I am the director of the Eatonville Celebrate Recovery. We are here again on Tuesday, and uh, we're here for you. We're missing all of you guys out there. We would, we'd just like you to know that we are here. Today, we're doing something different. Today, we're going to start on lesson one on the, out of the Celebrate Recovery Hand Guide. So, with no further ado, my wife is gonna come in and she's gonna teach for us. So, listen up. Well, welcome to Celebrate Recovery. I'm Shelly and I am a grateful child of the King who struggles with addiction and codependency issues. And tonight, I'm here to teach the lesson on denial. This is based on principle one, realize that I am not God, I admit that I have power, I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. Happy are those who know that they are spiritually poor, Matthew 5, 3. And step one, that we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors and that our lives have become unmanageable. For I know that nothing good lives in me that is my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good but I cannot carry it out, Romans 7, 18. So tonight we begin a journey together, a journey on the road of recovery. The journey begins with principle one, where we admit that we are powerless to control our tendencies to do the wrong thing, and that our lives have become unmanageable and out of control. But before we begin this exciting journey together, we need to ask ourselves two questions. Am I going to let my past failures prevent me from taking this journey? Am I afraid of change? Or what are my fears of the future? So let's look at Hebrews 12.1. It says, since we have such a huge crowd of men of faith watching us from the grandstands, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back and especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up. Let us run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. So there's two things that I want to point out about in this verse. First, God has a particular race, a unique plan for each of us, a plan for good and not a life full of dependence, addictions, and obsessions. And the second thing is, is that we need to be willing to get rid of all the unnecessary baggage, the past failures of our lives that keep us stuck. Again, it says, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back. And especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up. For many of us, our past hurts, habits, and hang-ups hold us back. They trip us up. Many of us are stuck in bitterness over what someone has done to us, and we continue to hold on to the hurt and refuse to forgive the ones that have hurt us. You may have been hurt deeply, and perhaps you were abused as a child, or maybe you were in a marriage where your spouse committed adultery. I want you to know that I hurt for you. I'm truly sorry that you had to go through that hurt. But holding on to that hurt and not being willing to forgive the person who hurt you in the past is allowing them to continue to hurt you today. Working this Christ-centered program will, with God's help and power, allow you to find the courage and the strength to forgive them. Now, don't get all worked up. You don't have to forgive them tonight. But as you travel your road to recovery, God will help you find the willingness to forgive them and to be free of their hold on your life. Some of you are bound by guilt. You keep beating yourself up over some past failure. You're trapped, stuck in your guilt. You think that no one anywhere is as bad as you are and that no one could love the real you. 
that no one could forgive you for the terrible things that you've done. But you're wrong, because God can. That's why Jesus went to the cross, for our sins. He knows that everything that you've ever done and everything you've ever experienced. There are many here in Celebrate Recovery that have faced similar failures and hurts in their life and have accepted Christ's forgiveness. They are here to encourage you and to support you. The Apostle Paul had a lot to regret about his past. He even participated in murdering Stephen. Yet in Philippians 3.13, he tells us, no, dear brothers, I am not still all that I should be, but I'm bringing all my energies to bear on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So here's the bottom line. If you want to be free from your past hurts, habits, and hang-ups, You need to deal with the past bitterness, guilt, once and for all. You need to do, as it says in Isaiah 43, 18, forget the former things, do not dwell in the past. That doesn't mean ignore the past. You need to learn from your past. Offer forgiveness, make amends, and then release it. Only then can you be free from your guilt, grudges, and grief. Because let's face it, we've all stumbled over a hurt, habit, or hang-up. And the race isn't over yet. God's not interested in how we started the race. But he is interested in how we finish it. You may worry about your future and be afraid to change. We all worry about things that we do not have any control over, and we do not have the power to change, and we all worry, and we all know that worrying is a lack of trust in God. The truth is, is we can say without a doubt that the Lord is my helper, and I am not afraid of anything that a mere man can do to me. That's Hebrews 13, 6. Now, you may have been hurt in your past. Sorry. Sorry. You may have been in your hurt or habit or hang up for so long that it becomes your identity. You may be thinking, what will happen if I change? Will I give up my old hurts? If I give those up, who will I be? Who would I become? You may have been abusing alcohol, prescription drugs, or food. You're afraid what you'll do without that substance of choice. You may have been enabling someone with a dysfunctional relationship for years. Perhaps you wonder, what if I change? Will my partner get mad at me? God doesn't want you to stay frozen in an unhealthy relationship or bad habit. He wants you to do your part in becoming healthy. Even in our past, even if our past was extremely painful, however, we may still resist change and the freedom that can be found in really working this program because of our fear of the unknown or because of our despair, we just close our minds and think that we don't deserve any better. As you work the principles and the steps, remember 1 John 4.18, Where God's love is, there is no fear, because God's perfect love drives out fear. Now, you're not watching this by mistake. This program is full of changed lives, and it is my prayer for each of you that you will not let your past failures or fear from your future stop you from giving Celebrate Recovery a real try. Are you wearing a mask of denial? Before you can make any progress in your recovery, you need to face your denial. As soon as you remove your mask of denial and face it, 
your recovery begins. And it doesn't matter if you've been in recovery for a long time or if you're brand new to the steps. Denial can rear its head at any time. You can trade addictions or get into a new relationship that is unhealthy for you in a different way than the previous ones. So this is a lesson for each of us. We have a saying around here that denial is not just a river in Egypt. But what is it? Denial has been defined as a false system of beliefs that is not based on reality and a self-protecting behavior that keeps us from honestly facing the truth. As kids, we all developed coping skills. They came in handy when we didn't get the attention that we needed or wanted from our parents or others, and we used it to block out pain and fear. For a time, those coping systems worked, but as years progressed, they confused and clouded our view of the truth of our lives. As we grew, our perception of ourselves and our expectations of all those around us also grew. But because we have retained our childish methods of coping, our perception of reality became increasingly unrealistic and distorted. Our coping skills grew into denial and most of our relationships ended up broken or less fulfilling than they could have been. Did you ever deny that your parents had a problem? Did you ever deny that you had problems? The truth is, is that we can all answer yes to these questions. Denial is the pink elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about. They don't want to acknowledge it in any way. So do any of the following comments sound familiar to you? Can't we just stop talking about it? Talking is only making it worse. If we don't talk about it, it'll go away. Honey, let's pretend that that really didn't happen. If I tell her that that hurts, then I'm afraid she'll leave me. He really doesn't drink that much. Paul drinks more than I do. Joan's been married three times. I've only been married twice. I eat because you make me so mad. If you didn't nag me all the time, I wouldn't. Look, honey, I have a tough job. I work hard. I need a few drinks to help me relax. It doesn't mean I have a problem. Folks, that is denial. And as I said earlier, before we can take the first step of our recovery, we must first face and admit our denial. God says in Jeremiah 6.14 that you cannot heal a wound by saying it's not there. So let's look at tonight's acrostic. Celebrate Recovery loves acrostics. And tonight it is the word denial. The D in denial stands for disables our feelings. Hiding our feelings, living in denial, freezes our emotions and binds us. Understanding and feeling our feelings is where we find freedom. Second Peter 2.19 tells us, they promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of destructive habits. For we are slaves of anything that has conquered us. For me, the basic test of freedom is not what I am free to do, but rather what I am free not to do. Not to take that first drink. Not to light a cigarette. Not to help out someone who needs it when they are having destructive patterns in their life. The next letter in denial is E, which stands for energy lost. A major side effect of denial is anxiety. Anxiety causes us to waste precious energy dealing with past hurts and failures and the fear of the future. As you go through this program, you will learn that it is only in the present that positive change can occur. Worrying about the past 
and dreading the future makes us unable to live and enjoy God's plan for us in the present. We let our fears and worries paralyze us, but the only lasting way that we can be free from them is by giving them to God. In Psalms 146, 7 says, He frees the prisoner and lifts the burdens from those bent down beneath their loads. If you will transfer your energy that's required to maintain your denial into learning God's truth, a healthy love for others and yourself will occur. And as you depend more and more on your higher power, Jesus Christ, you will see the light and the truth and reality. So let's move on to the N in denial. Denial negates growth. We are as sick as our secrets. And again, we cannot grow in recovery until we're ready to step out of our denial and into truth. God is waiting to take your hand and bring you out. The Bible says that they cried out to the Lord in their troubles and he rescued them. He led them from the darkness and the shadow of death and snapped their chains. That was Psalms 104, I'm sorry, 107, verses 13 and 14. As you travel the road to your recovery, you will come to understand that God never wastes a hurt. God will never waste your darkness, but he cannot use it unless you step out of your denial and into the truth of the, his, his light. Denial also isolates us from God. That's the I in denial. Adam and Eve are great examples of how secrets and denial separate us from the fellowship of God. After they sinned, their secrets separated them from God. In Genesis 3, 7, tells us that Adam and Eve hid themselves from God because they felt naked and ashamed. Of course, good old Adam tried to rationalize. He said to God, the woman that you gave me, she gave me some fruit. So first he tried to blame God, and then he tried to blame Eve, saying, the woman that you gave me, she gave me fruit. Wow. <laughs> Remember that God's light shines on the truth. Uh, 1 John 1, verses 5 through 7, says that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness... We lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Our denial not only isolates us from God, but it alienates us from our relationships. Denial tells us that we are getting away with it. We think that no one knows, but they do. But while denial may shield us from the hurt, it also keeps us from helping ourselves or the people we love the most. We don't dare reveal our true selves to others for fear of what they will think or say if they know the real us. We must protect ourselves, our secrets, at any cost. So we isolate ourselves and thereby minimize the risk of exposure and possible rejection from others. But at what price? The eventual loss of all important relationships. So what's the answer? Listen to Philipp Ephesians 4.25. It says, stop lying to each other. Tell the truth. For we are parts of each other, and when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. So remember, it's always better to tell the ugly truth rather than a beautiful lie. And finally, the L in denial is lengthens the pain. We have the false belief that denial protects us from our pain. And in reality, denial allows our pain to fester and grow and to turn into shame and guilt. Denial extends your hurt and it multiplies your problems. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, I will give you back your health again and heal your wounds. Truth, like surgery, may hurt for a while, 
but it cures. So tonight I want to encourage you to step out of your denial. Walking out of your denial is not easy. Taking off that mask can, is hard. Everything about you shouts, don't do it. It's not safe. But it is safe. Here at Celebrate Recovery, here you have people who care about you, who love you for who you are. People who will stand beside you as truth becomes a way of life. Jesus tells us to know the truth and the truth will set you free. Step out of your denial so you can step into Jesus' unconditional love and grace and begin your healing journey of recovery. Thank you. I hope you all have a blessed day. Wow, that was great, Shelley. Thank you so much. Lesson one, denial. The beginning of a long journey. So, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. And uh, thanks again, Shelly, for doing that. And uh, we'll see you uh, later this evening. And we'll see you again at 10 a.m. Sunday for church and 8 p.m. for Sunday at church. Until then, we'll see you next week on Tuesday. Bye.